Our next guest understands all too well the journey of hurt, healing, and reconciliation. Her grandfather, grandmother, and uncle went through residential schools. She currently serves as an Aboriginal cultural instructor for the Indian and Métis Friendship Center in Saskatoon. Please welcome Marilyn Mintram to Context. Marilyn, what happened in your life that required healing? Unfortunately, I lost my brother um, a few years back. So that was, that was really hard. Um, and to you know, that journey of healing and understanding and just um, going through that process, like that, that hard time, um, God really helped me in that, in that difficult time, as well as my family and the community um, really came together um, and just brought love and, you know, kinship, the principles of kinship. Even before the show, Mary Lou, you, you said something that was so interesting. You said how your relationship with uh, Jesus Christ really helped to uh, give you landmarks to follow, if you will, and how to reach healing, um, forgiveness, reconciliation. How did that apply to not only your brother's story, but also um, healing from the hurt that your grandmother, grandfather, and uncle passed through? God has been a very important, has played a very important role in my life. And that's a testament from my grandparents. Um, my, my gukum, she um, was a woman of prayer and uh, had taught me how to pray. And, you know, introduced the, the word to me and we would read scripture together and she would bring it into context of how it could be applied to my life. And uh, we always had really great conversations and I realized that Christianity is not really a religion, it's a relationship with the creator. And um, those type of conversations really helped me. And then when it came to my difficult times, that's when I really connected with God um, and just really allowed him to touch my heart because I became more vulnerable and really needed comfort. I needed love, I needed support. And, um, and through God, I was able to, to find that and more so with the people that I love. Were there generational hurts as well um, that you were requiring healing from? I know we've been speaking a lot today about um, just in general the reconciliation that's required. Mm -hmm. My Gokum and I are very close. And when it comes to residential schools, she does not like to speak about it. Um, it was very difficult for her, um, as well as my Musham. He, um, I don't, I can't tell or I can't articulate the things that they've experienced, but I know it has a dramatic impact on them. Mm. And, uh, and for myself with uh, young people and elders, they, they, they have a very strong connection mm -hmm. in our community. And uh, it was important for me to recognize that hurt, but also I thought it was more important for me to find a way in which I can help her as she's helped me in, in walking in that healing. Because I, I, can't, I can't fathom what she's gone through. And, and I won't be able to understand fully the depth of what actually happened. But I can be there for her. I can pray for her. I can be there with her. Um, and, uh, and we've been able to do that. What do you say, and I'm going to um, not necessarily push back, but let's go back a bit. What do you say to someone who is watching this, whether at home or even in our audience, you know, who's saying, you know what, I'm not a Christian. I don't have a relationship with God, with Jesus Christ. How do I reach healing? Where is my healing coming to play? How, how do we respond to that? I first would like to listen to their story. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has their own journey, and everybody wants to be able to find, um, you know, which, how to be able to walk in a good way in their, in their journey. And for me, for what helped me with my, with my faith and, and everything was having a listening ear. And then from, from there, be able, to, um, be able to be in a point where I can receive, you know, because I opened up. Mm -hmm. I shared my story. I shared things that are concerning, that, that I have concerns of, and, and that shouldn't be taken lightly, right? So giving respect to that person and hearing their story and then being able to go, can I share with you my story? Mm. You know, let me share with you how I got through my difficult time. How do you reconcile the symbol of the cross as um, that picture of hope and peace, but at the same time, that same symbol for many, um, 
w represents nightmare, and it was the, uh, many of those atrocities were done in the name of the church. How do we build those bridges again? I know it, it's such a hard question to answer because it. I don't want to make general statements, um, and I know there's a lot of things that could trigger, um, you know, experiences. You know, some, for some people, it could be checkered floor, mm -hmm. you know, or, or things like that. So it's really hard to, to determine what, what would be able to, to trigger a memory, good mm -hmm. or bad. Um, and unfortunately, the cross has become a, a symbol that, that would trigger that emotion. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, the cross is it's, it's a symbol of, of hope, of mercy, of healing of grace and, um, you know, it's, and also vulnerability, you know, mm -hmm. being able to stretch, you know, stretch out your arms and just an act of love, an act of uh, mercy. So to be able to um, hopefully have a relationship with somebody where, where it may be a negative impact, be able to talk about that and just kind of open that thing because most cases there's, you know, it's difficult for people to really express or, or they surpass, you know, they, they, they um, don't want to go there mm -hmm. because it caused too much emotional pain. But if you create an atmosphere of safety, of, of, of being able to have um, a posit like a, a, an open, safe dialogue, then hopefully that will be able to help address those wounds, right? Because it's, it's not supposed to be a symbol of, that creates nightmares. Can you explain also how your relationship with Jesus Christ intersects with your culture and your tradition? Well, I grew up in the church, and, um, and my, my gokum, um, like I said, mentioned before, she, she was very instrumental in that. And, and at the same time, she also um, was instrumental in really emphasizing that when God created me, it was good. Right? I'm, I am a princess, is All what right. she used to say. <laughs> and... Um, and it really encouraged me to accept and be proud of who I am as a Cree woman. And, and I, I do introduce myself saying I'm Cree from Northern Manitoba. And, um, and she taught me um, how to beadwork. And I'm very, I love beading, I love sewing. And um, t I also teach uh, beadwork and, and regalia. Um, and and that, became, that became more of a passion of mine and, because of my relationship with my grandmother. So I was able to take that and that cross-cultural and intergenerational teachings and being able to pass that on as well. Mary Lou Mincham from the Indian and Métis Friendship Center in Saskatoon. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. After the break, some closing thoughts on reconciliation. Truth and reconciliation are two such powerful words. In decades past, they conjured the image of healing in post-apartheid South Africa. Now they bring hope for spiritual peace with Canada's First Nations. Yet those words resonate well beyond those two stories of injustice and healing. Truth and reconciliation are ancient spiritual ideas rooted, among other places, in the Bible, the very book brandished by many who caused the injustices. It's worth mentioning that in the Bible, Jesus saves his harshest language for those who do evil in the name of God. And it's through the story of Jesus, as told in the Bible, that we learn the value of truth as a sort of light by which the journey of reconciliation is made possible. For all of us at Context, I'm Sheldon Neal. And I'm Eternia. Thanks for watching. Lorna Duke returns next week to explore more life beyond the headlines. <laughs>